present. Well, hi. So um, I think that, uh, first of all, can you hear me? OK, good. So I think the reason that I was asked to start things off, I know that this isn't quite the format that they, they usually do here on uh, Experts Night. Um, but I, I think I was asked to, to kick things off because, uh, in part because of my background um, as a teacher and a literacy specialist, and also uh, partly because of the, the uh, focus area of uh, our foundation, the Kenneth Rayan Foundation, in promoting early childhood literacy. Um, I started off teaching in a, a very underprivileged uh, neighborhood in Concord, California, and then um, did a 360 and, and taught uh, first grade at Stewart Hall School for Boys, which some of you may know in San Francisco, um, kind of a culture shock. And then, right, and then um, I, I ended up moving to Evanston, Illinois, and teaching for a year in a preschool there. Um, and that was actually um, really transformative for me. So Evanston, you probably know, is home to Northwestern University, um, right, OK? So, uh, and it's, a, it's a sort of an upper, upper middle class kind of a community. Um, and all of the parents in the preschool uh, were very educated people. Um, and the preschool was lovely. It was charming, nice. It was a great place to, um, I thought, to send kids. And I, I would have sent my own kids there had I had them at the time. Um, and I thought that we were doing everything right. I thought we were really doing a great job of preparing kids to go out and be successful in um, kindergarten. And it turns out we weren't. Um, I had a kid that year, David, who um, you know, came from a good family, seemed like he was doing great, um, went through the whole program, and then went off to kindergarten. And, and his parents told me he was really struggling. He was not actually. Um, prepared at all for kindergarten. Um, so our, our preschool program had failed him. And I was shocked. And I wanted to uh, understand what we missed. What are, there has to be um, best practice in early childhood literacy. So I um, marched myself over to uh, the University of Illinois and signed up for a doctoral program to answer that question. And it turns <laughs> out. <laughs> That, that question had already been answered. There's a huge uh, body of research uh, that's been out there for a long time. We already know what best practice is in early childhood literacy. But we're doing a, a terrible job of getting that information out to preschool teachers. Um, yeah, we're really, we're, we're, it turns out that in order to uh, become a preschool teacher in most places in this country, you, all you need is six units of early childhood education. And not one of them has to be in literacy. So in 2007, um, shortly after I figured all this out, uh, my life got turned on its ear when my dad died. Um, and he left me with the seeds that I needed to start the Kenneth Rainin Foundation. He gave me uh, three giving areas, which all came from areas that we had supported together, um, uh, arts education, and medical research. And he gave me a set of bylaws and a starter board. And that was it. Go start a foundation. <laughs> so, um, so you know, I grew up in Piedmont, California, which is just across the bay. Um, in a, you know, it's an affluent community. I had access to the best education. I was really fortunate. And less than a mile from my house um, in Oakland, I knew there were kids who were struggling. Um, I'm back in Piedmont now and raising my own kids. And it turns out that things haven't really changed in Oakland in all that time. Um, half of Oakland's kids enter kindergarten, um, and they're already behind. Half. Over 60% of Oakland's third graders are reading below proficiency. And that's a really important statistic. Because our research shows that if you are not reading on grade level by the end of third grade, there are real serious implications for things like um, high school graduation rates, teen pregnancy, um, incarceration rates, um, and very costly remediation programs. So, um, 
so sorry. So I really should have brought my reading glasses. That would have been so <laughs> clever of me. <laughs> uh, right? Oh, my wife is so nice. Thank you. Anyway, so look, when I think about, oh, you nice lady. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm not going to need them at all, but thank you. Um, anyway, so in starting this foundation, um, and when I think about um, education, really what I'm thinking about is what, is the, the, what kind of society do I want to live in and what kind of society do I want my kids to grow up in? And you know, it's wonderful that my kids have access to great educational opportunities, but I really I think about it like we're building a house. So if any part of the foundation of that house is weak, then the house itself is going to be structurally fragile. If any of the kids in our community are not getting what they need to be successful, our community is going to be structurally fragile. And the analogy works when you think about um, early childhood education also. Preschool is the foundation of a child's uh, educational experience. It has to be strong. It has to be really high quality. So, you know, boosting uh, early reading proficiency, was, and I did a little research before I came up here just to be, that now I do need the glasses, thanks, honey. Um, so boosting early reading proficiency is not only um, helps us bridge the achievement gap and reduce dropout rates, but you know, research shows that it strengthens our workforce, it can decrease mortality rates for every additional year of instruction that a child gets. It'll um, improve the overall health of our community, which decreases insurance rates for all of us and tax rates. Um, and you know, there's at least one, studi one study that found that a one-year increase in medium, median education level is associated with a jump in political primary turnout. So, <laughs> right? So, it's important, so we've got to get this uh, sorted. So, so the Kenneth Rainin Foundation, uh, as we're building our programs, what we're doing, we're looking for partners whose, whose approaches are grounded in research, who have demonstrated um, uh, their effectiveness in Oakland in, tr in improving literacy rates. Um, and it, we're, we really have ambitious goals for Oakland. Um, you know, I really, I just wanted to focus, I, I knew if I, t I thought if I took my education funds and put them all into Oakland, and then even further just focused on early and emergent literacy, I thought I might be able to really make um, a significant difference for my community. And we're starting to see um, some significant gains. So Susan will tell you, uh, uh, one of our speakers, Susan True, will tell you all about this, uh, I think, when she comes up here. But um, in the last year, we had kids in our programs who made 30 percentage point gains on their literacy assessments. And that's a huge deal, huge deal. Um, and I actually completely blame uh, Susan True, who I'm about to um, introduce, for, uh, for all of the success. Um, Susan, I met um, when, she, it was the day before her last final at uh, Stanford. Um, she was getting her MBA after having successfully run first five uh, Santa Cruz for nine years. Um, Susan is uh, kind of like me. She likes to sit at the back of the room and um, question the status quo and throw spitballs and um, you know be generally disruptive. And tonight she doesn't get to do that, so she has to stand up here and moderate this fabulous panel. So I would love to introduce you all to one of my favorite people, Susan True. Come on up here. Thank you. <laughs>